In this video, I'm going to go over showing you how to add and customize the product element to your site. So here I hit uh, add an element, I'm going to search for product. There we are. You can see that there is a product in our, pay in our site here, so I'm just going to hit apply. So first things first, we can change the style of the product. If we want the text to be over the product like that, we can do that. We can select push here. Push is a really good style. Uh, has a little box for the text that pushes up onto the image. We do a badge as well. It's where the box is actually fully over the image. We can quick view it right down here. So there's a lot of good styles you can choose. Uh, they look really nice, all of them. Uh, it's just up to you to choose which one you feel fits in best with your site. So I'm going to go with overlay here. Next thing here, we have slider. Um, so if I have a lot of products, say I have 10 products here, um, it'll show four in a row because we have four columns down here. And then you can, there'll be a little next button right here. We can page through them. It'll show the next four and do a full slider, which then makes it one dedicated image here. So, and then instead of being four in a row, you'll have left and right buttons right here to page through each item individually. And we have row, which is the default view, and the default amount is four in a row. I can change that right here. Let's see, now there's two, we can go all the way up to eight. Four is a pretty good happy medium. Then we have masonry. Masonry is pretty cool um, if we have many different uh, products with different sizes. Uh, it will kind of automatically build a little row and uh, makes them all geometrically uh, fit together. Uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, can get a little confusing though if, uh, if you have a lot of different varying product sizes. So we do suggest you use masonry with caution. Then we have grid. And this will use a standard grid layout on your site here. There's 14 standard layouts. Um, of course, it'll it'll work better whenever you have a lot more items through here, but you just page through here, find the layout that you really like. Once you find it, you can select it. I'm going to go back to row here. Next thing here is we have the width, so we can do the container width. And the container width is the width of the actual page content, um, and then full width. If we were to select that, that would make it be the entire width of the website uh, of the uh, page not just the container. So no matter how large your display is, it will always be as wide as the, as the display you're viewing it on. Then we have column spacing. Uh, column spacing is just how much distance is in between two items. So collapse is zero distance whatsoever. We go from small to large. So I'll select small here. Then we have depth here. So as you can see, as I make this a little bit larger, this item now has a shadow. And we can also do a hover depth here. So as I roll over this item with my mouse cursor, you can see it lifts off the page, provides a good user feedback, lets them know this is something they can click and this is something that they should interact with. Then down here in, the, uh, in this little box here, we can select which items we do want to be displayed and which items we don't. So for example, uh, it's in the wings category, but if we don't want to show the category, we can turn it off, now it's gone. We can do the same thing for price. Say we don't, we want to be a little elusive. We want to make them click to see the price. We can do that as well. We can give them a direct add to cart button. Uh, that'll happen whenever they hover over it and it'll allow them to add it to cart. We can give them a quick view button as well, right here. So if they click that, it'll give a little preview right on the page. We can click equalize items, which there's not much here, but whenever that's turned on, all items will be the same apparent size. Down below here, we can select a custom post if we want. So we only have one product in the store, so we would use the wing product. But if we only wanted certain products in the store here, we could do that. So say, for example, I have one wing product, and then I have another wing product that's different. I can select that right here. So I can only show what I want to show in this product section if it's a product showcase, for example. Here we can change the image height. As you can see, whenever it's zero pixels, it's nowhere to be found. And the more and more I change the image size, the taller it gets. But you see it doesn't change the width. So if I change these here, these are aspect ratios. You can change these to how you want it. Or if I click this X here, it'll go back to 100% tall, which means whenever it's 100% wide, it will be a perfect square. If I change its width here, you can see what that does. This effectively changes the image size. So if I want it to be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, I can do that here. 
can change the radius of the image. So if you pay attention to the corners here, you can see it makes a pretty dramatic change. So if I want a smaller radius, I can do that. Or if I want to be, the image to be a perfect circle, I can crank it all the way up to 100% and do that as well. We can change the image size here. Uh, this doesn't change the size of the image on the page. This changes the size of the image that is loaded onto the page. Um, WordPress creates uh, many different sizes of your images in the background. So for a product like this, for, a, for an element like this, it's a little bit smaller on the page, so we don't recommend you go anywhere above medium, just because at this point, you're really not going to get any more detail out of it. And the only thing you're going to do is make it load a little bit longer um, for people viewing your website. And you can see here, whenever I switched it to medium, it did change the size of the image, the ratio of the image, just based on the size of medium. But I can change that again if I just click this one by one right here. It'll go back to a square or two by one, however, however I want it to appear on this page. I can select an overlay here. So for example, if I want there to be a reddish overlay, I can do that. And then this slider right here, this is the transparency slider. This is what will allow me to change how transparent that white, that red is. So if I want it, uh, for example, down here you can see product. It's a little difficult to read just because of what's on top. So I can bring this up a little bit here, and now you can see we can still see the image perfectly clear, but now wing product, no questions asked, we can read that. Then hover here, we have hover effects. So whenever I select different effects, we can see it makes the image do things. Glow is subtle, but glow makes the image really pop off the page. We can make it blur, for example, so now whenever I hover over, hover over it, it blurs. That's also good for readability in case it's a really complicated background, but you really like that picture. Whenever they hover, they can read that text very well now. Then the position here, this is the positioning of the text. So I can make the text appear in the middle. So now the text is uh, vertically centered or at the top. So now it's at the top. I usually like to select bottom just because it gets out of the way, lets them see that image and uh, the image should draw the user to that element. I can change the size of the text right here so I can make it really small, or really big, whatever I feel suits my website. And change the hover effect here for the text. So for example, if I don't want the text to appear on top of the image, I can do that. And now whenever I hover over, you can see combined with that hover effect for depth that we did up here, it makes a really good hover effect. And it makes it, this is very, very well, very well done. And change the background. Uh, color of the text here. So if I were to choose this and whenever I hover, now you can see that text has a background to it if I so desire. Lastly, I can give the text a padding. So if I make the padding zero, you can see now this is right up, a, up, uh, right up on the edge of that background, which we usually don't recommend. So if I were to give it, for example, 20 pixels of padding, now you can see there's padding in between here. And you can see whenever I drag this, that's what padding does. It provides more distance between the content and the border that the content is being housed within. Then down here, we have class. If you're familiar with CSS and CSS styling, you can give this a custom class name, which you can then target in the CSS styling options on your website. And then lastly, we have visibility down here. So if for any reason you don't want this to show up on certain devices, uh, you can do that down there. Just make sure that every person has the best experience on every device. Once you're happy with the way you've configured your product, you can hit apply. Then you can hit update. Once you have that updated, you're good to go. If you have any questions about the products, uh, go ahead and contact us. We'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.